Hello there. This is one of a series of videos accompanying the Joomla tutorial developing an MVC component. And today we're going to be looking at adding back end actions. Now I'm going to actually split this step into three. So in this first video, we'll look at the hello world table display. That's this thing here. And then in the next couple of videos, we'll look at the delete and the new slash edit actions. So I've uh, partly put this, um, got the code together for this and installed it onto my Joomla site here. I've actually just put in the first couple of files here and added the language translations. But if we go to the site here, I put, haven't put any of the back end actions in. So anything like this, when I click on anything, will actually cause an error. So let's have a look at these files and see what's new. In our view file, we've got this add toolbar, which is a reference to this method here. And here we're adding a number of toolbars or buttons uh, to the toolbar. So that's what we've got here. We've got a new button, an edit button, and a delete button, as well as this overall title here. Now, what are actually are these things if we put on F12? And we inspect one of these elements. We see that this is a button and it's got some JavaScript associated with it, which is Joomla.submit button. So what this will actually do is submit this form uh, in a post request, uh, which will go back to the server. So it's really like we have three submit buttons on the form. And if you're wondering why Joomla takes the approach of submitting things via JavaScript rather than having three submit buttons, uh, you might be interested in this Stack Overflow question. Uh, by the way, I'll put links to these websites on the notes to the video. But if we go back to our code, um, the interesting bit in our button is this thing here hello world add hello world edit hello world delete now as it said here it says here you can find um information about these buttons in this file here so i've brought that in J toolbar helper. I did have a look round for documentation on this, but couldn't find any. So I think the only way that you find out about what buttons you can put on is really by reading this. But if you look on um, this and go for function something, you'll find a lot of things that can be put on as these buttons. And if you've used Joomla and go through content, for example, you see a whole stack of buttons up here. And those will be represented somewhere in our J toolbar helper. We've got a delete button here. So if we go for that. Cool. Delete list. And if you have a look in the file, it has got comments here explaining what the parameters are. So, for example, the, the first message to this delete list is to provide a are you sure method. So, when I've coded it up, I've actually put, oops, Into my instance, I've put a message there. So when I go to this component, something there, and press delete, it'll come up with that message.
But the key thing is this parameter here, the task. And as you can see here in our code, we've got a number of different tasks set. And if you remember when we did actually look at the Joomla code, I think it was when we were adding the model, we looked at this bit of code in JView Legacy. This is our JView Legacy um, controller. Oh, sorry, not JView Legacy, J Controller Legacy. Control Legacy. And we went to get instance and inside get instance, we have this bit of code here. This is the first thing that we call when we uh, process our HTTP request and it's checking for a task of the form controller.task. So if it gets something like this here, it treats the first part before the dot as the controller and the second part as the task. So when you go on to your site and click on something here like um, edit, you'll see it's looking for that particular controller. Click on something like eight. It's looking for the Hello Worlds controller. And that's what we've got here. We've got Hello Worlds controller here for the delete and Hello World for the add and the edit. So it seems to be a bit of convention that if you're talking about more than one record, like in, for example, with delete or there's other things like publish, uh, you use Hello Worlds. If you're talking about one record, then you use Hello World. Interesting enough, Edit List does support having a number of records. So you can go on and click a number of these and press Edit. However, um, really what happens in practice is that only the first one really gets serviced. So you can go on to Content and Articles and you can try clicking on a number of checkboxes and then clicking on edit to edit those articles. But really what happens is you only get the first thing, the first article. So even though it's an edit list, it seems only really suited to um, editing the first one when you click uh, first one of the checkboxes checked. Right, so let's, uh, let's go and we'll put on F12. And let's clear this down a bit. And we'll have a look and see what happens whenever we click on something. So an edit has a result in a post. And if we look at the parameters to the post, there's our task. And CID uh, really refers to the IDs which have been checked and also we've got a little thing called box checked which tells us the number of items which have been checked. If we take for example a number, click delete, oops sorry, and OK. We get again in the post we see hello worlds.delete. If we go instead, we can click on one of these uh, to edit this message. Click on that. Uh, we see a different thing. This is a get instead of a post. But the information, the task, hello world.edit, is passed as part of the URL there and the ID equals four. And so you can determine which um, which hello world message uh, you're wanting to edit. So you can see that the parameters, the task parameters can be passed in a couple of ways. If it's a get um, HTTP request, it'll be passed in the URL. If it's a post, it'll be passed as the post parameters. But 
on the server side, Joomla does something which is quite nice, which is um, it kind of unifies the interface for us. We've only got one function to get to, to find out what the task parameter is. And it doesn't matter whether it's a get or a post, Joomla provides the same interface for us to get that information. So that's the view side of things. Let's go back and we'll have a look at our layout file and see what's new here. So here we've got a link. This is just setting up a variable which we do down here in this um, link here. And here's another of our underscore functions. This is jroot and we're passing a URL into that function. Now, if you want to know what this does, if we go to our system, switch off debug and global parameters, we have over on the right hand side here, search engine friendly URLs. What that means is if we go to our site and click on something like GW, the URLs really are friendly in the sense that they um, give an idea about what you're displaying here. So if we change this to no and save that and go back to our site. This is the unfriendly form as it were. So it's saying option hello world um, view equals this, item ID equals this. So it's really saying that, uh, you know, this is item number XXX out of this component, which really doesn't mean a lot to anyone, uh, neither users nor search engines. So search engine friendly URLs are of the form um, that it provides something interesting and something meaningful for the user and for search engines to see. So we'll put that back and it goes back to GW signifying that that is um, my world. And there is a bit of text about documentation on this on the Joomla site. And the key thing is JRoot will look after um, displaying your URL in the form that's defined by this global configuration. So in our code, we're just putting in a form like this. And if we didn't have JRoot there, whenever we put that out, it would always be like that. Um, however, if we use JRoot, it will transform that into the search engine friendly sort of URLs like it here. Now, having said that, um, search engine friendly SEF URLs seem to only work on the site part. They're not, they don't seem to work on the administration part. So here, maybe it's a bit superfluous, but certainly on the site part, if you're putting out a URL of that form, you want to use jroot and that underscore function there. So that's that. And then we come down here and we notice a couple of things that uh, we talked about in a video whenever we first put this together. Um, and these are kind of like hidden fields. The task really is kind of like a hook that um, the JavaScript uses to specify the task. And then that goes up in the um, post parameters box checked as well goes up and that just indicates the number of um, number of check boxes that have been checked and in my code I've also set this back to true so that now go to components this here unpublish item the final thing is this little thing here form token um, what's that well, if you want to know, there's a page here about CSRF anti-spoofing. So it's worth reading about that. 
the the way that Joomla works is that it adds this. Actually, if we click on something and we'll actually see this here. So it's a random string that is kind of added to the form, and then that goes up in the post parameters to Joomla. But as well as adding it to the form, what it does, Joomla does, is it puts it into our session cookie so that whenever we get to the server in response and we start processing this post, um, we'll see this here and it will compare that with whatever has been stored in our session cookie. And uh, that means it knows that it's as a result of this form uh, and filling in this form, this particular form, that uh, this post request has appeared on the server rather than by some other means, which is uh, described a little here. And in our code, then, if you look at some of the code, for example, this delete, it will do a J session check token. And uh, if it finds that the token is um, invalid, it will just die. So anywhere where there's a danger of updating, uh, changing the database, like in deleting records or in saving records, it will check that token. Okay, that's about it for this video, all fairly straightforward. And in the next video, we'll go on to maybe something that's a bit more interesting. But thanks for watching.